This was 20 years ago. That would get censored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet we're told free Palestine. Oh, no, no, that's a problem. Why is that a problem? What's wrong with that? The flag, Earl. The flag. You got people getting knocked on the door because there's a problem with the flag now. And you have to give your phone and you can be held without evidence. They don't have to tell you why. Yeah, you can just be held willy nilly. So if we were in control, if we were part of the cabal, then surely we'd get rid of Schedule 7. We'd get rid of Prevent, because I used to work in an Islamic school. I'm telling you, bro, when Ofsted comes, like, how comes we're not promoting LGBT? How comes there's no free mixing happening? How come the boys and the girls aren't able to sit together? Why are you separating them, mate? Uh, what about your grammar schools? Why are girls told to wear skirts and boys have to wear trousers? Girls go, no, no, don't, no, no, mate, no, mate. Yeah, so, so when people are trying to say that, oh, yeah, it's, it's the Muslims, why is that, statistically speaking, ITVX reported this, that in these last couple of weeks, in these, in these last couple of weeks, statistically speaking, mostly majority Muslim women have been targeted, abused, targeted. Why is this the case? I thought we were in power. I, 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 thought, I thought we had a Muslim uh, London, I thought, I thought we had a, I, I, I thought we had a London mayor. We are listening. It's okay, uncle, don't, don't give her attention, don't give her attention. That we had a Muslim mayor. But why is the Muslim mayor participating in the, in the LGBT marches? That, yeah. yeah what, what's, what's the deal with that? Why is that even Muslims have got issues with him? Why is this the case? Why is it that I, I, I'm saying that there are certain that any you speak to any Muslim and say is Sadiq Khan doing this? Is this permissible? Muslims unanimously will say no, it's not. However, I, I would say the situation that he's in politics is such a dirty game. They say it turns a human into a dog. So it doesn't matter how good you are when you go there, it will turn you into an animal because of the system that you're in. And it's like, it's like they, they laughed with Donald Trump. They said that Donald Trump came with all of these, um, they came with, he came with all of these promises. However, as soon as he got sworn in, they say they're taken into a room and the real people in control said, okay, here's what's going to happen. And that's why even Vladimir Putin said, yeah, he's a good guy. But the people that have no, no, uncle, leave her, leave her. I do that. I'm sorry about that. I have to do that. But uncle, she is. She is I am. I am. I have. Uncle, a she has to earn her money. I, I have a trouble with my ears, and I am now waiting for to get ear, 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 uh, you know, hearing aid. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. It's difficult. Uh, it's very difficult for me to yeah, yeah. so concentrate on. Uncle, she's had to get paid. Nice, very good conversation. Yeah. Very, very good conversation. Yeah. I'm very enjoying. I'm very interested. But she just tells me I can't see it. It's break time, so, break time. <laughs> okay, carry on, my brother. The end of the day, Sorry. if she can't have a conversation, yeah. that tells you a lot. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. So, I told you. So, so that's the thing, Earl. When it comes to these sorts of things, it's Quran, Islam is head and shoulders above the rest. And that's why I will come and I will defend the scripture. I, I will de I will defend what's there, the methodology. I can't defend Muslims. Yeah, just like Christians, Christianity can't uh, defend Christians. Or Christians can't defend each other because that's the thing. And and Earl, when you when you analyze when you analyze these things, that's why I say, look at the institutions. Look at the things that Islam promotes. No interest. No sleeping outside. Have children. I'm with Hamad. Don't be promise. Don't be promiscuous. Don't kill women and children. However, when it comes to certain scriptures like these, these same people, you you heard Netanyahu quote the Old Testament of killing babies. This is in the Old Testament, killing babies. And there's another verse that says, take the infants and then slam them against rocks. They're talking about Amaleks and telling the people to kill the Amaleks. So and then they consider us all the Gentiles, the Goyim. Or Goyim, yeah. Gentiles, whatever terminology you want to take. But then they, but, but the thing is, uh, yeah, well, what, what, what can you say? But however, the thing is, as, as, as Muslims, we don't need to do that. All, all, all I need to do, all I need to do is just 
promote and talk about the Quran. That's Wallahi, that's all I need to do. If I was to call her and tell her, tell me the 20 ancestors of Jesus. Tell me. She won't be able to. She won't be able to tell me. However, if you ask me, name me the 20 ancestors of the Prophet. I will, I'll try to give it a go. Yeah. Yeah. Muhammad bin means the son of. Yeah. Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib bin Hashim bin Abdi Manaf bin Qusay bin Kilab bin Murra bin Kaab bin Lu'ay bin Ghalib bin Fahir bin Malik bin Nadab bin Kinana bin Mudrika bin Ilyas bin Mudar bin Nizar bin Mu'adh bin Adnan so, so for us I'll, the reason why I did this is because it's, it's filmed on camera people can check this and the reason why we do this is because we're proud of our tradition we're proud that it's preserved for the same reason that you said there are so many forces that will come and they will try to corrupt it they will try to change it you can't you can't even the lineage of the prophet peace be upon him has been preserved has been looked after yeah even when you look at sayings of the prophet peace be upon him no one can come in no one can add stuff but the thing is Al, am i degrading christianity to you from our conversation i haven't but yet these people are so insecure they feel the need oh this this will happen why because again it stands head and shoulders above the rest and that's why Earl, you will see it grow and it depends if you believe in the in, in the future of george orwell or of huxley orwell says that things will become very dystopian there will be a lot of control and people won't be able to say x y and z like v for vendetta yeah. or you've got huxley that says that no people will willingly give up their rights and they will willingly put neurochips in their head and put chips in their arms and say, oh, we are doing this because we're going to have a, be able to open our doors and, and, and you know, use this as a credit card. Hey, I'm, I don't have to carry that many things in my pocket. I've just got a chip in my arm. But hey, what if that chip gets hacked? Oh, what if it gets controlled? That's the thing. And that's why you got the Mandela effect. Certain things that as a collective mass it's a collective, as a collective, we believe in a lie, which can be proven to be false. For example, apparently in Star Wars, the most famous line is, Luke, I am your father. Have you heard of this? Apparently that's not what the script says. Apparently the, the actual script is, look, I am your father. Apparently it's a collective lie that, <laughs> that's been fed to us. But that's what I'm trying to say. The more things become digitized, the more things will be easier to corrupt. So the Quran, yeah, so, so preservation, there's a reason. I started with that argument. It's so, so fundamental and so, so important. And that's why we proudly will tell you about the lineage of our Prophet. We'll proudly tell you his sayings in Arabic and in English and give you the chain and tell you the people in that chain. Why? Because we're trying to show you, look mate, you can't corrupt objective morality. It's something that's not going to change. Yes, a Muslim might say, no, we're living in the West and we should be da 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 da. Okay, but does the Quran say that? Do you see? That's subjective. Exactly. So the, the scripture is objective in its kind of gen, generality. However, when you look, there's a reason uh, people are, are going to gravitate towards Islam. However, the forces on the outside are more prevalent. I'll give you an example, like I'm a YouTuber. I'm telling you the amount of censorship and difficulty I'm facing when it comes to just producing content. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's, it's, it is very difficult. If you say Free Palestine, this used to happen 15, 20 years ago. On BBC Radio, Charlie Sloth, rappers would come on and they would say Free Palestine, it would get censored. This was 20 years ago. That would get censored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yet we're told Free Palestine, oh, no, no, that's a problem. Why is that a problem? What's wrong with that? The flag, Earl. The flag. You got people getting knocked on the door because there's a problem with the flag now. Now people have to put watermelons up. Now the watermelon's <laughs> going to be banned. Yeah. 
then the banana is going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, so watermelon is the colors of, of the Palestinian flag. So, uh, yeah. so it's... Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> probably, probably, probably. Then the banana, then the apple, <laughs> all of this, every fruit. Any, because octopus, apparently octopus is anti-Semitic as well. Yeah. So the octopus... Like yeah, but then, but then... I don't, I don't want to, people are going to call me anti-Semitic if I name other animals, so I'm not going to do that. But what I'm saying is that if then, then animals are going to be banned, and this is going to be banned, and that is going to be banned. How, but you can insult Jesus, you can, you can do that. You can insult the Prophet Muhammad. Hey, lighten up, man. <laughs> it's freedom of speech. Yeah. Let's discuss about yeah. Holocaust. And let's yeah. like, whoa, well, whoa, the, what's the going Jewish on there, mate? And I just said, let's discuss, yeah. whoa. They yeah. deny what happened. Anti-Semitic cancel, get rid of him. Uh, Let Kanye West him. So that, that's, the pro, that's, that's the point that I'm trying to say. And I agree with you, but what I'm saying is there are certain things that objectively we can measure. Like, like I was talking about the Quran, if I was to tell you that the chapter of Noah is chapter 71. The chapter of Noah, chapter 71. And there are 28 verses in there. Yeah? 71 minus 28 is 43. 43 so if you look at the chapter of Noah, 43 chapters before, don't mention the word Noah. 43 chapters afterwards, don't mention Noah. So if this was something random, then why is even numerically it's miraculous? Even numerically, like Noah in Arabic is Nuh. It's a three letter word. Yeah. And the first time it comes up in the Quran is chapter three verse 33 the all these threes yeah and then if you look further you'll realize even in the chapter of noah where, where is it coming up this we see threes again so again this was a book that was revealed to an unlettered person it was a book that was revealed circumstantially not in verse or chapter order however it must be miraculous that's why it's if it was something weak even in the park it would be easily refuted. Oh, this is a contradiction. This is ridiculous. This doesn't fit. That doesn't fit. Why is it that it's still leading? Even though it's being suppressed. Even though I'm telling you somebody working in Islamic school, I'm telling you Earl, it's very difficult to even classify something as an Islamic school. It's so difficult. However, when you go to certain, certain religious people, no, that's because the, the, that's because when it comes to the law, it's being more enforced on Islam to liberalize. However, when you look at certain Jewish schools, they don't even teach English in there and they're getting, you know, below average, I think inadequate, but they're okay with that. But when it comes to Muslim schools, that's no, enough no. to kind of yeah. take us off and it's difficult. So Islam is coming under attack. You Absolutely. look, anytime something happens, Al, LBC, the whole day we're debating it. Front page headlines, the 40 beheaded babies was not verified. Earl, it was not. It was a barefaced lie, Earl. They've admitted that now. On these very same platforms like Sky News, they've admitted it. But on the front page news, Earl, it was everywhere. Why was it everywhere? That's because they say, they say well, that... I think they're winding up the West. Because they want civil war here. This is what they're really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like they're um, labeling you guys. So when, when people say, oh, Islam's are here to control and this and that, control what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we can't, we can barely control our own schools. We can barely even control our kids. It's very difficult. On the one hand, I'm telling my child, oh, okay, let's... Do you think they're bringing you over here to liberalize a massive... I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll, 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 I'll tell you the types of people that get bought over here. In Afghanistan, there were two people, the two groups of people that were fighting. One was pro-West. So you got the Northern Alliance, they were fighting for them, they were fighting for the West. You got those sorts of Muslims. Then you've got the other, I'll put them in quotes as well if it makes people happy, but you got other Muslims that were with the Taliban. If you were fighting with the Taliban, and then Taliban come into power and you want to come to the UK, you get no asylum. Only if you are siding with us that you get asylum. Yeah. If you're in Iraq, if you're siding with us, you get asylum. Oh, yeah. if, if I'm telling you, I'm telling you as a Muslim, yeah. Yeah. there are certain people, you get, there's two ways that you can come to the UK. Two ways. 
you'll get asylum here. Not if you're a Sunni Muslim. No. no. If you say that you're gay, if you say you're gay and you've been persecuted, you can come here. Welcome. Welcome, mate. Welcome to Great Britain, mate. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, mate. You shine your shoes, do all of that, true. mate. <laughs> or if you are an Ahmadiyya. Ahmadiyya are a, we don't class them as Muslims, but they were born from a colonial period when Britain took over India. And this guy who claimed to be a prophet came out and said, you don't need to fight them. You need to look, respect them, <laughs> love them. Look, there's no need to fight, no need to do, 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 do. And he was very pro. That's why if you're Ahmadi, you can come over here. If you're, you know, homosexual, you can come over here. No problem. If you're Sunni, if you did it, whoa, <laughs> oh, no, what can no, you bring to it? I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, listen, yeah, Al, yeah. I'm telling you. As a Sunni, what can you bring to the table? Oh, I'm yeah. a doctor, mate. All right, you can come here and you can shine some shoes. No, but I'm a doctor. Now you're going to come here and then you have to do a couple of things again. Yeah. No, but I've been curing so much. Other. Nah, it doesn't matter anything over here. I know people that have done medicine over there. They have to come here, do three extra years. People that are lawyers up now, nah, but that doesn't count over here, mate. Maybe you guys have just done some a Pakistani or version of, mate, of that, mate. So I'm telling you, mate, there's certain types of Muslims or certain brown people yeah. to, to you guys that might seem like, oh, there's loads of them coming over, mate. What's going on? But even when it comes to Indians, loads of Indians coming over because India is going to be part of BRICS and it's a geopolitical stronghold. A lot of countries are going for India. It's a very important geopolitical stronghold. But when it comes to Muslims, mate, we're struggling, mate. On the one hand, if like my mate was telling me about some new movie that came out, I don't want to name the movie, but he was saying he watched it, his friend watched it, Sin Cinemas, he's saying it is ridiculous. They were talking about it, it was just mad. And then I come home, after my kids seen that, then I'm like, all right, let's, uh, let's sit down and let's read. How on earth is that kid going to, you know, get that same dopamine release that he just got from a movie? And if you look, which, which Muslims have taken over the, the, the um, movie industry, the music industry, the banking industry, the oil, even the oils, uh, the, the one industry that we apparently had, even though it was the Americans that were in kowtowing with the Saudis, even that is going to be overruled because obviously we're being environmentally friendly now. So this notion Earl, that, oh, they're taking over and it's they, that is absolutely not the case because the Muslims that are here, I'm telling you, it's so difficult to keep your child on religion because what you have to do is you have to detox. You have to do a dopamine detox because no matter who you are, especially if they're in the schools, I'm yeah. telling you, I'm thinking twice about even allowing my children to even attend a school because of the garbage. I used to be a school teacher. I know. I would hope school my children. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's so early. But then they make it financially impossible yeah. to do that. It's, it's but 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 if that's the thing though, it's financially impossible and all that. If we were taking over, surely we'd have institutions above the law. But if you go to um, what's the um, the Jewish. A uh, place near here because it's uh, S. Stratford? Stamford Hill. Hill. Over there, apparently, they have their own ambulance. Yes, they do. Yeah. They have their own police. They own have police? Their yeah. Yeah. You tell me, Leicester, in Leicester, you tell me one. <laughs> you, you, you tell me one ambulance that we have. Mate, even the, even the leaders of like Queen Mary's in East London. Yeah. Like, yeah, the majority of the people might be Muslim, but the people pulling the strings, the head teacher, will be a white person. Notice this, even when it came to the LGBT thing in Birmingham, the head teachers were white people. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but what I'm saying is when there's this illusion of, of they're taking over and this and that, come on, let's. let's, let's. I wouldn't say they're taking over. Eh? Yeah. Would... Majority. We got the majority anyway. Minority. Majority doesn't mean anything. But we could put them down to the south, to the south, south of England, say and this thing. All white people. How did you find someone? Yeah, uh, uh, Asian or Indian or whatever. My point really was yeah. over time. I'm living in Netherlands. I'm living in Netherlands. So. Right? The majority of the people. But even even if you got black and black uh, and brown people, like look at Rishi Sunak. What what Hindu do? You, what Hindu thing do you see about him? Yeah. Sadiq Khan. What Muslim thing do you? So when you do get brown people in power, there will be I don't want to use the terminology because some people regard it as racist. 
but they're regarded as coconuts. I'm not saying he is one, I'm just telling you for academic reasons. <laughs> Brown on the outside, white on the inside. Yeah. That's a label that they use for them. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So, so that's the thing, that even when you do, like Barack Obama, yeah. he had a, a yeah. pastor yeah. Yeah. called yeah. Jeremiah yeah. Wright. Yeah. But Jeremiah Wright had no access to Obama when he became president. So there, there are certain kind of things that are in place so this notion, I don't want you to fall in this trap, Earl, because, yes... When I said yeah. that, I wasn't saying Muslims too. Oh, no, no, you didn't. It's you know, I understand that, but yeah. Yeah. you said the white is getting... Yeah. 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 Which is a, a true. Yeah. 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 Certainly, you know, I mean... Like, I've, I've been in IT for 17 years, yeah. I can't find a job. Yeah. I've been employed for four months, um, I might have to leave London, so I just can't find work. Very difficult. If I, I can't buy a property yeah, yeah. in the in London, yeah, I've, yeah. it's impossible. I'd have to go to yeah. one of the ghettos like Birmingham, yeah. Yeah. which apparently yeah. we're taking over. It's cheap because it's cheap as well. I'm struggling over there as well. You know what I mean? It's, it's not cutting it. But that's the thing when you're self-employed, when you're doing stuff yourself, and because I don't want to get a mortgage, because again, I believe interest is, is forbidden. Yeah, I'm not that as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? Many, many teachers, many teachers left London because very. Uh, the, the cost of life is very high. Yeah. They, they, they went away. Yeah. You know, cheap, but you know, yeah. uh, most of them are white. Yeah. And then look, look over Asia. Yes. Uh, you, you need to get a committee. <laughs> very, committee. very nice to see you. Nice to see uh, you too. I'm really very glad. I'm very happy to see someone like you, very educated. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, my pleasure. Really nice nice to see you. So, so Al, that's why we had this discussion last week as well, and uh, hopefully I've kind of, re um, kind of reinforced certain things and removed certain biases. Like it's definitely not a takeover thing. Like, interesting, you say what's different with the Sunnis compared to them and all the others. Is that Shia? So, so Shias will face a similar problem to us. Like the Shias that are traditional Shias, they can't come over. However, if you're a Shia that are complaining of being oppressed in Iran, i.e. you're already liberal, you have a liberal framework, you can come over. So, so you stick in yeah. to your... Yeah, yeah. So liberalism is welcome. If you're being oppressed in these countries because of liberalism, you're welcome here. If you're homosexual, if you're being oppressed because da 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 da, then you're more than welcome here. If you're traditional, then no, you're not welcome here unless you're like a really genius guy, or you're gonna come and you're gonna da, 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 da. then you can come. But da, 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 like now, they've raised the, the bar that if you want to bring, like even if you're established, even if you're born here, you have to have a, a annual income of 38K to bring somebody over. And that's excluding the surcharge. That's excluding the other stuff. And it, it's really not as simple as that. It's certain people that will come and reinforce the liberal, with a small L, philosophy, here in the UK. So they are just reinforcing that whole... I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him in, train him up and then send him back to the land so, so they can't... So here's what you, you said that you didn't know about what's going on in Pakistan. So Biden... LGBT yeah, so what he's... Yeah, so English teachers are being funded in Pakistan. They're giving extra funding if they are promoting LGBT there. So this is on Fox News, you can Google this. So this is, again, and even like we, even when you go to the villages, there's, there's something called English medium schools, which is increasing, like the English language, very common. Even the law over there is relying upon the, the English law and the, the, the parties that are very kind of prominent. They have very strong liberal connections. The army, it has very strong links with America and the likes. So there are, you know, certain things that when we hear this sort of stuff taking over, uh, even though you didn't say that, but certain people will say that like clearly it's laughable to us because we're like hang on a minute since the dawn of Pakistan the Islamic Republic of Pakistan since the start of it not one leader has been able to complete one complete term finish a complete term they've either been deposed they've either been killed you know since the beginning of the of the of the state of Pakistan since it got started or inaugurated since the beginning any leader that's come into power has not completed their set term. It's been cut short because of either foreign influence or 
you know, they've been killed, or they're this, they're, they're that. But Pakistan is strategically very important. It's all about strategy, it's all about national interest. This is what Theresa May said openly in the Member of Parliament when she was asked about killing Syrian babies. Her response was, if it's within our national interest. That's, that's the case. And when you look at these things, it does blow back. Jeremiah Wright, who was the priest of Obama, said this, Americans' chickens are coming home to roost. Like everything that we've been doing outside, they're now coming back and biting us in the back backside. So I would, I would say the Americans are being scapegoated. Although I would agree that they carried on working and funding by paying taxes and funding that. Yeah. But I would say they're subjugated and occupied and controlled. I know a lot of Americans are just like you and me and got families and we'll all be a couple of <laughs> whatever you call That's the thing Earl. So yeah, when it comes to Shias, they fall, fall in the same track. So there are certain people that get bought over. But Nick Griffin's got, ironically, he was brought up in the Prime Minister's speech as well. He has awoken to this idea as well. That this notion that get the Muslims out and this and that, this was something that was facilitated earlier on. It's not something that can be fixed now. We now need to deal with it and handle and, and hold hands to remove a greater threat. However, that greater threat is trying to get us fighting amongst each other, which is what you said. I don't want to get rid of Muslims. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying no. Of course. I'm just saying like, we need to work together to realize who the real enemy is. And it's not each other. Uh, if I was to speak to a Christian, if that Christian is okay with the Bible being corrupted, and you know, with having anonymous authors, etc., etc., even though we have a nice discussion with them, that person's like, you, I'm still gonna stick with Christianity. For me, that's still a victory. I'm still happy with that. At least that guy believes in God. At least he or she has certain morals that that person will go out and have certain level of morality, which is what we need nowadays, Earl. Because I'm going to be honest, like this is this is my country. You're making a cake, you stick to the so, so Earl, like this, this is I, I was born here. This is my country. These are my people. I don't want it to go down the crap hole. You know what I mean? It doesn't bode well for me that it's going down the crapper. So it may it bodes well for me that I come here and I try to correct what's what's going on. And the thing is, look, you know Cat Stevens, yeah. Famous singer. Yeah. So he accepted Islam, became use of Islam. But again, you see so many people accepting Islam, but they're still productive members of society. We still want society to prosper. And how are we going to prosper society? Stay away from interest. Don't sexualize um, our people. Um, no gambling, no alcohol, no drugs, etc. etc. We're dealing with our own community. Drug problem amongst our ghettos and our own people is a problem. But the thing is, when it's war on drugs, where are those drugs coming from? Like the drug wolves in America, crack cocaine was being bought in by the CIA. I heard that um, more opium was growing in Afghanistan yeah. they took over was before. Like, yeah, so when, when the Taliban took over, opium's gone down. But now they're being sanctioned. They're being punished. So it's ridiculous, mate. Like cocaine is something that in the, in the city of London that we see over here, that's the most favorite drug of there, the cocaine. Yeah, so what can be said about these things, Al? So, what do you think at the moment? Because obviously, when it comes to morality, we do need to have certain grounded morality. Where are you at the moment with obviously what we discussed and the likes? I agree with a lot of you said, yeah, about the morality of it and looking after the children and looking after each other and um, living by a set of rules. Yeah, then here's my next question then out of interest what what the what are the boxes that would need to be ticked for you to accept Islam I don't really like to label things or say I belong to wrong group that's fine this, no problem I can listen to you today and I can agree with what you said and go, you know, I have to take that away, I can live a better life if I do that. I can be less stressed and angry if I think like that. I can just go on my way and make things and connect. And 
that's fine. Even being a Muslim, you don't have to, you don't, it's not an obligation to declare it to everybody. Even though when you accept Islam, it's good to do it in front of two witnesses because you can get certain benefits like burial, like the Muslim burial is a bit different and inheritance, etc, etc. But th this is a personal question to you. Personally, what would it take for you to accept Islam? Maybe I already do, but I just don't feel like I need a label. I don't feel like I need to go into a building. I don't need to wear a certain type of clothes. Um, but I could prob I'm probably very quite aligned with, with what you think. I haven't really disagreed with anything you said. Um, I think probably most people are like that. Yeah. You know, we all want to look after the children, don't we? Yeah. We all want to look after our parents, and we don't want to see what's going on in Gaza. And I think we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So, Earl, now here's the next thing. I'll tell you the reason why a label in this case is important. You don't have to sing and shout about it to everybody. You can still do the things that you're doing, like connecting with other people, hearing other people. Can, uh, and you don't have to disclose that you're a Muslim but the reason why it will be beneficial for you is because you'll have a map and that map will help you navigate morality more precisely than you would outside of that map outside of the map what would happen is it would, there would be a lot of trial and error like happens with subjective morality a lot of okay uh, I touch this yeah exactly so Islam just makes it easy for you so it's like you standing in the shoulder of giants <laughs> and reaching greater heights so rather than restricting your growth that's all it is and in islam a verbal declaration of something is very important to god not to me anybody else like we could do it outside we could like you could say you know what let me just speak to you outside you could do it off camera whatnot and you just have to repeat one line which is i testify there's none worthy worthy of worship besides god and i testify that muhammad is a messenger of god which is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. That would mean Islamically you are a Muslim. Now that means that now that connection has been opened. Because you have opened yourself to God, that means there are certain things that you can't see. The metaphysical as it were, you have connection to God through the metaphysical. Even though as a non as an even as a non-Muslim, you do have a connection. For example, if me as a Muslim, if I was to oppress you and you're not a Muslim and you were to curse me yeah, to God, God would still hear your prayer. A lot of people don't know this. Yeah? But, you're, but if you're a Muslim, you have a stronger connection with God. Yeah? That there are further supplications that you can make to Him. You can pray to Him. Yeah? And there's certain like you got Ramadan coming up now as well. Where fasting and there's, there's different ways that you get to have control over your life. Fast, yeah. yeah, and discipline as well. But but here's the thing now, fasting is fantastic. It's good for you, but that's the physical nature. But there are certain spiritual timings, like just before sunrise, yeah, and just after sunset. These are spiritually significant timings, yeah, in which even if you like just before the when you open your fast, the sun comes down. You can supplicate to God, and when you supplicate to God, He hears your prayer. Sorry, what is supplicate? Supplicate. You can ask God, asking God for something. Yeah, and that connection with God is much stronger. Yeah, and you can supplicate and you can ask Him. And in Islam, that supplication is more likely to be accepted, and your connection becomes stronger with God, and you feel your heart connect with God, and it becomes purified. Because as Muslims, we believe that when you commit sins. There's a black dot that gets placed on your heart, yeah. And if you commit bad acts and bad sins, then what happens is that over time you become impervious to bad things and you become an evil doer, and it becomes more difficult for you to stop doing that thing. So the more forgiveness you ask God, it purifies your heart. God doesn't require blood sacrifice like certain other faiths. You can literally raise your hands and you can ask God. You have a personal relationship with God. Like you said, there's no garbs that you are obligated to wear. There's no, you must go to that building and do the, 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 the. Yes, it's recommended for you to feel part of a community. But if you're working, then you can pray at your workplace. You can pray at home. You can even pray here in the park. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because even the, the connection with nature is something that Muslims we have. Like even when you're cutting your nails, we're encouraged to 
bury nails and hair into the ground. Even when they're praying, it's ideal. Like when the Prophet would prostrate, his head would connect to the ground. Because, yeah, yeah, grounding. So we have all of these things. But in order for you to know that when you accept Islam, you're more open to scripture. You're like, okay, now I can read this. Okay, now I know that this is not just written by any old Larry or any other individual. It, it gives you direction. If you want to learn philosophy and stuff like that, learn philosophy. Muhammad Hijab learned philosophy, etc. You can. I've got a copy of the Bible at home. I've got, you know, Hindu stories at home. No problem. But the thing is for me, Islam is the one that's unadulterated, that is practical, that is relevant and unchanged. So that's that's the the nuance and that's why it's important. And if a person accepts Islam, for them eventually they will go to paradise. The bad deeds that they do, they will have to go to hellfire to get rid of them. If of course you live a bad life, if you seek forgiveness and you do good things, of course you get rid of those bad deeds because a good deed outweighs a bad deed. So in order for you to know this, it's, you'll be more spiritually in tune, you'll feel more connected, you'll feel more complete. And yes, outside, yeah, you can meet other people, you can do that anyway. So what do you think about that? Because I personally think if you feel you're aligned anyway, you believe in this stuff anyway, for you to testify, it's not like, aha, you've testified now, got you. Get them boys, bring in the chopper. It's not gonna, like, that's not how it is. So it's literally, it's, it's just going to be like, well done. You might get a couple of hugs and people saying, well done. You might exchange numbers, you might have questions or whatnot. But the journey is still going to be up to you. You read the Quran, if you want to read other scriptures or what, that's up to you. But at least you have a more directed and more kind of precise route that you had before. That's all I'm saying. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, it sounds reasonable. It sounds good, yeah. Um, probably read the book first before I declare anything or say anything. That's fine. Because, yeah. like, uh, you got, is it your uncle? Or? No, it's the first time I saw him. him but I, if he's like my uncle, <laughs> yeah. because I did... But there was like, said to me as well, like, don't convert to Islam. Yeah. Read the book, yeah. understand it, and come, come to it with a feeling, yeah. rather than a, oh, I just want to be part of something. But, but the reason why I even mentioned that to you is because there's a difference between what you said and say what somebody else would say. Because you said yourself, you're aligned to it anyway, you believe in it anyway, and the precepts and the likes. So the alignment is there anyway. What now needs to happen is standing on the shoulders of the research that's done already and what's there already and to benefit. I'm not saying that, you know, the, the here and now. What I'm saying is that it seems to me like you're ready. However, if you want to read further, but don't delay it. Uh, because death is something that it doesn't matter if you're an atheist, a Muslim or a Christian. Death is something that's inevitable. That doesn't mean accept Islam right away. It means that give it a priority. Like, okay, I'm going to take out the, I'm going to do the washing. Okay, take out the dog, you know, visit my mom you know, finish my, you know, papers or what. No, this needs to be at the top of the list because of its urgency and, and how it can help you in other facets of your life. Like you're talking about being more peaceful and being more calm. Imagine if somebody said, okay, doing this particular prayer, recite this three times and hopefully this will help and this will relax you and it will unlock so many other things that I can't necessarily tell to you because you did this you need to be kind of grounded with the with the foundation and stuff like that. Like if I was to talk to somebody else about grounding, it wouldn't make sense to them. But it, may, it click, you click to it straight away. It, may, it made sense to you, do you see? And even as a designer, like last time when we um, spoke as well, the symmetry in design, Fibonacci sequence, <laughs> and um, the golden ratio and the likes, that clicked to you straight away. Somebody else, they wouldn't, they wouldn't give two, they wouldn't give monkeys about that, you know what I mean? So um, that's what that that's the only reason I said that. You're more than welcome to, and like you said, and like I said, we come to the park often. You're more than welcome to take me to the side and said, you know what, I do feel aligned, and you can either do it on camera, you can do it off camera. It's absolutely up to you. But you're you're, you're more educated about the nefarious nature of what's going on than the average individual, and you're more clued on to this stuff. And I wouldn't be surprised if you accepted Islam very soon. But it's up to you. Um, how quickly you want to do it, how, however quickly you, you do it, 
that's however quickly you will get to flourish more often because you're like you're like a flower that's grown but you've grown from the moisture of you know the passers by and you know the dew and stuff like that islam will be the one that will be watering you will be giving you that nourishment that comes from the source that will be truly helping you flourish growth can be done in any society but flourishing that can only be done from the creator because the creator's created us he's designed us he knows how everything functions and what needs to happen at what time and for you to have that connection so i'll definitely yeah so have a look at that and then i'll be here and just pull me aside whenever you want and then we can have a, a part three yes. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but definitely i'll Always a pleasure. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah.